What is the crack, lads? And welcome back to another eFootball 2023 video. Today, we're taking a look at all the gameplay changes coming to V2.2. So, I'm going to go straight into this because there's a lot to get through. We're not going to dilly dally. We'll have a little chat at the end as well as the, my thoughts on where the game is at at the moment and, you know, my, my kind of experience with it and hopefully hoping and looking forward to the future. So, we are going to start with the update that will be coming on the 16th of November, which is tomorrow. Yeah. So, we don't have that long to wait until we see all these features and additional stuff in and the updates in for gameplay and stuff so just an overview if you haven't checked out my video yesterday now's your reminder to go back and check out that where i cover pretty much everything here so i'm just going to fly through this these are just kind of like the new features and stuff coming and then we're going to get to the, the meat and veg of this which is the gameplay so they talked about a new match pass i have a video coming about uh match pass later on today after this video goes up so that goes into that in depth i'm not going to focus too much on it because there is a full full like 10 minute video coming on it standard player tickets that looks to be like a new way of signing players apart from gp and apart from coins so i presume that they'll just be tickets as rewards within the match pass that ties in with that or be able to do events there'll be standard player tickets that you can buy a three star player or four star player maybe they'll bring in legends as well that would be huge versus ai matches and challenge matches and now users can change team inauthentic team challenge events so if you were playing a national team challenge and you picked italy or you picked france or you picked portugal or you picked brazil or whoever you would have to stick with them through the duration of the challenge now you can switch it up and there is a match ai matches and challenge events as well entry conditions regarding player application for dream team challenge events so they are going to be bringing in challenge events where you might have to have certain conditions for your squad so maybe it's a team of all brazilian players maybe it's a team of all premier league players maybe it's a team with a team strength of 2000 so that's just challenge that are going to have entry requirements to them missions for new users of eFootball I would say that there's a lot of new people downloading the game and trying it out so they're going to be probably you know holding their hand a little bit through uh, you know how to get through because there's a lot of depth in it if you've never played a PES game before um, you know how to sign players how to train them up what to train whatever um, cursor change option semi-auto they've also added when set to assisted the cursor will now automatically switch in a more frequent manner um changes to the amount of subs coming for the world cup mode the national teams more filter options for standard players list so if you are searching for players at the moment i definitely recommend eFootballDB.com. but they are going to be adding more filter options for that so it'll be interesting to see that as well and then they talk about all the following team data that has been updated so you're talking animations commentary boots stadium graphics uh team data player photos strips graphics manager photos all that sort of stuff now, on to what I want to talk about, lads, because the first thing that I notice here is they talk about dribbling, which to me is music to my ears. If any of you guys have watched my gameplay, I will, you know, rather pull off a, a really nice dribble and beat a man than, you know, do a one-touch pass every now and again, uh, you know, to do it and beat a man because I, I just like dribbling in the game on out wide. That's my favorite play style. I love playing out wide. I've played out wide since day one. So they've ta they're talking about implementing enhancements to the response when switching between a normal dribble and a dash dribble. So this is basically when you're sprinting and you stop and then you dash dribble accelerate on again that they've they've kind of enhanced that response time, which is which is big. It'll be interesting to see how that works in game they also talk about adjustments so that when switch between a normal dribble and that dash dribble the directional inputs will now be reflected in a more correct manner there'll be often times where i'd be on the byline close to the line close to the end of the pitch and i do a turn but then i do another turn but it wouldn't register quick enough so the ball would kind of dribble over the over the, the touch line by like a fraction it was very frustrating because you'd have beaten your man you'd have taken him on the inside track there was room for you to go there if the player had just done what you asked him to do implemented adjustments so that when dribbling past an opponent again that's brilliant that's what i like to hear it is now less likely for the player to make contact and trip over this was a big issue i thought as well especially in the last couple of weeks you could rinse a player out into out in the wing george best style absolutely tear him a new one and then he just stick out his leg either by a shoulder charge or by uh, a manual um uh, you know l2 by holding l2 or else it will be contextual where it was like maybe Cancelo or it was like roberto carlos and they just get the ball back off you or else they'd actually foul you without the ref calling the foul so that's nice that they're, they're fixing that and looking at that as well 
fix the issue where the ball touches cannot be performed smoothly when doing a sharp touch again i hope that's not abused that's one thing i would say about that I, you do have to balance these things a lot uh, but that should be okay uh, once you're not able to like auto touch things and stuff like that that would be that would be where i'd be looking at that implemented adjustments so that we're performing a kick command right after attempting a large angle a large angle turn and dribble the kick can now be performed more easily so again i'm hoping that if you do a kind of open your body style dribble that you'll be able to kind of wind up the shot without taking a touch and then winding up a shot you know it's all about just kind of breaking the animations a little bit to make it a little bit more responsive and i think that's not a bad thing fix the issue where stunning passes are difficult to trigger and dribble when opposition players are near again i've been caught so many times at the back trying to dribble out and then you do a, a pass a stunning pass and it just takes an age implemented adjustments so that when performing a sombrero straight after a flick it is now less likely for the ball to hit the player's body so again i don't even think they need to mention that because you know if you're going to be going to be doing sombreros it should be difficult to pull off so we've got a second page of it here which talks about passing shoot and defense and goalkeepers there's a lot here let's to get through so buckle down pause the video here and go and get a cup of tea if you want or get a drink um but yeah passing increase the overall speed of low passes uh pretty self-explanatory they've just probably sped up the passes from getting from a to b uh will that you know again it needs to be very 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 balanced you know is it going to be a five percent increase or is it going to be a 25 percent increase because there's a huge difference between spraying the ball from left to right if it's going to be long, like you know if you're going to be playing possession you might notice that but if you're playing one touch pass that does worry me if you're playing full assist one touch pass that does worry me because at the moment the people that play the meta and play that way are getting rewarded for it implemented adjustments for low passes so that the cursor will now switch switch to a more suitable teammate again that's fairly self-explanatory we'll have to see that in action how quick it changes when you actually pass the ball uh, how quick the cursor changes Imp implemented adjustments so that a more suitable kick motion would be triggered when attempting a near pass opposition uh, a near a pass near opposition player sorry lads they also talk about implementing adjustments for true passes so that passes will now be played towards a position that is easier for the teammate to receive. Again, that was a big issue that you'd have a lovely spray through ball pass and it would just kick it straight at the defender no matter what you did. It didn't matter if you had 95 curl as an attribute or you had, you know, 40 curl. It didn't matter how you did it. It always did it if you were close enough to an opposition at certain angles and certain animations. Fix the issue regarding loose ball situations where kicks and passes cannot be formed even if the player is first to the ball that again is a, is a was a big issue in v2.0 i don't think it was as big as issue as i had seen apart from a couple of clips where you'd literally you know your player would just freeze in his tracks if there was a interception the player would like forget he was on a pitch for a minute but it wasn't a huge issue but it's nice to see that they're still doing it implemented adjustments so that when playing low passes with manual pass level set to three the passive speed is now completely dependent on the power ga gauge input with no further assistance okay so they've made it even more manual for people that like to play manual uh, pass assist so let's talk about shooting implemented enhancements to players with the player skill dipping shot or rising shot so that attempts on these shots will be more accurate again that is adding a little bit of more skill and a bit of finesse to these shots because if you've got a dipping shot or rising shot with a player you know it should be a massive in you know it should be a massive um it should be a massive risk reward thing that if you're able to trigger these dipping shots or rising shots they should be you know testing the keeper more often than not implemented adjustments so that when attempting a shot with the ball in midair but a normal shot and sudden shot attempt will now trigger a dipping trajectory again that is something that i like to see that's more of a visual thing i think um that the ball actually goes up then down instead of just kind of like staying even keel uh again that'll have to be seen to be kind of believed or not even believed but seen to be kind of like judged implemented enhancements and adjustments to the accuracy of first time shots of low passes from diagonally behind uh oh man i hope that that's the 180 oh my god if that is the 180 turn that's my biggest frustration with e-football passing at the moment is that or sorry that is first time shots off low passes from diagonally behind but what i mean by that is that if you are uh like you're back to the wall right and the ball comes into you and you're not really set in front of goal that you could just literally get a shot off and you used to score from it it wasn't that you'd score that often from it but it would like be a parry from the keeper and then it happened it was so frustrating the same with the passing they haven't mentioned the passing there at all which i wish they would have implemented adjustments so that when attempting a shot again to an empty goal the shot and target rate is now higher so again that was an issue as well that they used to have that you could be straight through on goal and then obviously you just missed the shot you'd hit the post or whatever it happened to me once or twice with romario of all people 
implemented adjustments for defense so that the cursor will switch to more players more appropriate player defensive situations this is all talking about defending adjustments so that the cursor will switch to a more appropriate player when defending oncoming mid-air balls such as lofted passes and clearance okay so they're talking about when you are say when the ball is in a situation or it's in a it's in a it's in a, an issue um it's it's in a kind of in the air or it's in a place where directional inputs are not thoroughly reflected during a matchup in defensive situations so yeah i think that there's a lot going on here with the defense but it can kind of be it, it's going to have to be seen it's not as self-explanatory i think as the shooting or the passing because i think defense is the most balanced that they need to keep it they need to keep defense very balanced and at the moment it's very automatic it's very 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 new friendly to defend you know if a good defender is able to go out and have full control of his team they should be able to completely just like completely have the tools to 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 shut down an attacking team if you have the game in a certain way that you can go out and everything clicks for you that you can win five nil against really good opponents in division one you should have it in a way that you can do a jose Mourinho on it and like shut down opponents if you really focus and you really settle on it so fixing issues with directional inputs um and fixing the cursor switching and all that is very good Perform man marking during the corner kick may not deal with the oncoming ball in an adequate manner. That was an issue as well that if you wore man marking as a tactical instruction, he just ignored the ball sometimes from free kicks and from set pieces. Fix the issue when defending players may unnaturally move away from a goal right after the corner kick is taken. Again, that was a big issue. I conceded in my last episode of Dream Team Chronicles, I conceded a goal like that where it was super, super, super frustrating. Let me tell you that. So now we're talking about a goalkeepers and there's just one fix for that and it says implemented adjustments so that in the case of penalty kicks it is now easier for the goalkeeper to save pacey shots uh, or shots towards the edge of the goal and parry them away from the goal okay that again it's not a big deal so let's talk about other gameplay enhancements on page two here we have adjustments so that the player who makes the run in a one two pass pass will no longer decelerate unnecessarily again that's something that needed to be fixed but uh i just want this game to be balanced man away from the one two like the one two um you know super assisted pass assist uh like top level assistance for the passing is very 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 automatic hand holding so i think they need to balance that a lot you know i don't want to be coming up against uh prime pep guardiola's barcelona every single game where there's like 90 percent pass completion no matter what i do no matter how many passing lanes i close the ball just gets through because my players can't defend but if the defendant is responsive enough that i can react to everything i don't have an issue with it adjustments so that teammates can move make forward runs will now take the offside line and the ball holder's body position into account and adequately decide to accelerate decelerate or to stay put so again there's a lot of words there for basically it is saying that uh they're going to be just taking the offside where they are on the ball. Like sometimes you could be like the ball could be on a you could be defending a, a ball coming in and you'd boot the fall, ball forward and you'd have one of your wingers in an offside position. You'd be kind of thinking, well, what the hell is he even doing in there? Implemented adjustments to the position of players for the team play style out wide. Yes, baby. Here we go. Teammates will not move too far forward and run a greater risk against counterattacks. OK, that's going to be interesting because that's going to be a change to how I play. So that would be interesting. We're going to have to go in and have a look at that and see if there is any changes to that. Adjustments to the position of the players so that players placed in the middle of the park and game plan will be less likely to venture into wide positions. On the same note, players placed in the flanks will be more likely to stay in a wide position. Hallelujah. Thank God. That's huge. If I play a wide player, I don't want him defending. I want him out wide. Fix the issue where players appointed with a deep line role under individual instructions and game plan would wrongly swap positions when defending. That happened a lot. That's why I didn't play deep line that often. Adjustments. So that is now easier for teammates in midfield to position themselves in an open space. Again, that's very, very nice. Fullbacks will now attempt overlapping runs in an adequate frequency in line with the configured team play style as well as their positioning. So Carlos does does what he wants anyway, so that won't apply to Carlos. But for the rest of the fullbacks, that should be good. Issue uh fix the issue where so shoulder charges were seemingly in a legal angle are not called for fouls. That is huge, man. That is massive that is massive there right there because that was the biggest abuse on the game at the moment forget about the one two passing that was that was even like not even worth talking about compared to the shoulder charge you know it was like wwe sometimes glad they fixed that again that'll be something that we'll either have to ac for ourselves or test out so fix the issue regarding throws where teammates on the other side of the pitch may crow, go across the pitch uh yeah that happened to me where i conceded a few goals from that as well that you'd flick to a player and then you'd flick right at the last second and throw to a different player that you wouldn't want Players will adequately dodge away from teammates and their on oncoming shots. 
Uh, adjustments to the behaviour of teammates when the cursor is switched to goalkeeper. Okay, that's interesting for manual goalkeeping. There's a lot to get through there, lads. Def definitely have a read through that again. Um, but yeah, th that that is going to be huge for me. And that is obviously massive as well there. They've kind of snuck it in there at the end. Shoulder charges uh, from an illegal angle, such as diagonally from or behind, are not called as fouls, are going to be adjusted now. So they've fixed that issue. They haven't said adjusted. They've said fixed. And then last but not least, we do have a couple of these details here. And it is general fixes applied to mitigate or eliminate the bugs shown below. Application may crash. Stadium selection. The stadium display may not match the time and season that you choose. Choosing certain teams and matches strips of similar colors may be selected by default. When we're starting the match with a seamless corner kick, the graphics of the kicker and corner staff, camera staff may overlap. Direct free kicks and goal kicks that directly end up in the goal or a user's own goal are deemed as own goals. Uh... If the number remaining substitution interval is zero, substitutes cannot be made from game plan before kickoff. So there's a lot of stuff on Xbox as well. Uh, they've fixed a lot of the issues with the Xbox only in friend match uh, stuff as well. So have a read through that. But yeah, there's there's a lot of fixes here, lads. I mean, there's a lot of UI fixes and graphic fixes and stuff like that um, that are going to really make a massive uh, difference to the actual on-game issue or on-game issues or on-game gameplay. Implement the changes to frame match so that when one user when one user returns to the match room after the end of the match, the other user who is still remaining on the results screen will see a notification at the top of the screen. Adjustments to the point algorithm uh, to the auto al allocate option and player progression okay that's going to be interested as well interesting as well because yeah they weren't giving you the best version of the player when you were doing player progression i made this point that that's why it is manual on eFootball db because they weren't giving you the best player and then people were you know auto allocating their points boosting up players thinking they had the best version of the players and getting whooped and after wasting all their progression points so yeah keep an eye on that as well they do talk about a couple of changes as well uh coming there is a couple of different changes i will do a separate video on the mobile version as well so if you are uh, interested in that, let me know and I will do it. I probably will do it right after this video before I... Uh I head back to work but yeah that is it lads a very long video but hopefully you guys stick with it and uh let me know what you think shoulder bar sh shoulder charge punishment is huge for me and i will be keeping an eye on there's good there's bad and there's a couple of potential ugly in this update but i think that everything that i'm reading there sounds good they seem to be having a very very kind of slow approach to updating things which yeah, I mean, it isn't bad if you're enjoying the game, but yeah, I will be doing a video discussing my thoughts on the game quite soon, and the podcast will be coming back as well. But yeah, until next time, lads, don't forget to subscribe. Big giveaway coming soon. Peace.